Okay, we're going to start with the nation. Atiku's appeal lacks facts, Tinubu tells Supreme Court. YFEC has not reconvened. Kwara Poli disowns suspected killers of hotelier. How CBN's lifting of restrictions on 43 items will affect economy. Work begins on 260 federal roads nationwide. Luke Koyede gets nod as EFCC chairman. Africa's debt relief call legitimate, says IMF MD. And two die, four injured in Oshun church building collapse. Okay, which story? Should I start with Well, oh, there's also the PSC promotes 5,718 5, police officers. Oh, there you go. Okay. So, this okay, one. Go ahead. Um, the IMF um, boss, the managing director of the IMF, Christina Georgieva, was addressing um, the African debt issue, of course. As she said, in 2022, public debt in Africa put together has, ex has reached $1.8 trillion dollars. And that this is just a fraction of the overall outstanding debt of developing countries. Africa's debt has increased by 183% since 2010. And this is four times higher than its growth rate of gross, uh, that's GDP, gross domestic product in dollar terms. So she says that the call for, you know, countries for debt relief or debt cancellation remains legitimate. And she says that uh, the, only that those, the debtors and the creditor countries Paris Club and all of those countries, um, uh, creditors, China, Saudi Arabia, oil, and Brazil, all of them must agree with these African, developer, uh, the, uh, African developing countries on the terms of the cancellation. But, you know, she, she agrees that we, we deserve it. Okay, let me take the CBN. So experts and organized private sector have hailed the CBN's um, new policy to lift foreign exchange restrictions on the importation of 43 items. Uh, they said the move would create jobs and strengthen the economy. Uh, some of the items are the rice, maize, wheelbarrows, uh, private airplane jets, Indian incense, tinned fish in sodas like Yargesha and sardines, palm canal, palm oil products, so many others. So the idea, according to this report, is that these 43 items can now be sourced, the, the, the forex to get them can now be sourced uh, from the, through the CBN. In the past, many of them had to go through the parallel market or through the black market to get the dollar uh, for these inputs, and that, that obviously caused the demand, and that's part of the rise we saw in the, in the increase. But however, experts are also fearing that this might affect local production, because eight years ago when this policy was, in, was introduced, the idea was to strengthen local production. But we've seen that even with that, people are still smuggling this thing. It's somehow it's still, it's still getting through the market. So um, CBN has um, added this 43 now to the, um, to the list of items they can actually source for dollars, although other experts are also worried that um, according to some experts, they said that they are really worried of the availability. I think the MBC had mentioned that during the break. The forex. That we believe that the efficacy of the new policy is likely to be subject to the extent of improvement in forex supply at the IE window. This view considers the anticipated increase in forex demand at the window following the lifting of the ban. So, and if we're not exporting, we will not have enough forex to share. And the, the few, we, the little we have, yes. is, is, being, is being sucked right now. So we're hoping that with this, now that the CBN is saying, Come to us for dollars. Uh, we are hoping that the availability to be available for them to no use. Get. We have to export more for us to have these dollars we're talking we about. We just it. have to, yeah, we have to earn the dollars. We yeah. don't have. So, so I have um, Quara State Polytechnic. So there's been a story that's been out about two young ladies who have been um, accused allegedly of killing a hotelier. They claimed that it was a, how do I put this in? Breakfast TV conversation. <laughs> there was supposed to be a relationship of some sort where three of them were involved, uh -huh. and it involved them tying up the person's hands, oh, and legs, okay. Beads, hands and yes, legs, him. and um, in the course of it, but they also had the intention of robbing him, and in the course of it, oh. he died. And so um, the story out there was that they are students of the Quara Polytechnic. So they the school were. is giving us an update to say that you know they've gone through their data and they found out that this. Um, two young ladies had since been um, withdrawn from the school in their first year after a <sighs> poor academic performance. So they are not students. Students of their um, institution, of their great institution. So that was just to put out there. But the girls' names are, um, you know, Joseph Joy Adama and Vandora Oreolua Favor, hey. uh, and they are facing this 
big crime of allegedly killing someone that they were in a relationship. The man went to quarantine no, and went to heaven from there. Okay. No, did you, did you see the physical parading of them? No, 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 I didn't. They, they went all out to rob him mm. and use any means to achieve it. Oh. They also drugged him, so they went, they should have foreseen they knew what they were doing. The, the possible outcome of because they tried to even stuff his mouth. Ah. So he doesn't make noise. So, so President Bola Ahmed Tinubu uh, approved more than 260 road repairs across the 36 states of the Federation, uh, including the Federal Capital Territory. So the Minister of Works, David Omahi, was the one who announced this while he was, you know, addressing reporters after he had a meeting with the president at the presidential villa yesterday. And he says that the emergency repairs will go up about 217 billion. And the president has approved more road interventions, including project upgrades. So they mentioned some of the roads. He said he approved the resurfacing of the third mainland bridge, a construction of Lekki Deep Seaport Road, both in Lagos, a reconstruction of two collapsed bridges in Enugu, and reconstruction of two locations on the Onichawiri Road. They also mentioned some other you know, construction <coughs> going on, including the upgrading of the ongoing Abuja Kefi Akwanga Lafia Road and the dualization of Lafia Bypass. Right. Uh, and they are saying that um, I think um, um, this Exim Bank is one that is funding, China Exim Bank is one that is funding this. And the way the government wants to make sure that all the roads are working efficiently mm. for us. Okay. The punch. Forex crisis, CBN raises dollar supply, lists ban on cement and 42 other items. Diesel laden tanker crashes on Lagos Highway, traps bus. LPPC names 58 lawyers, stand and drops 11 professors. Two die, others injured in Oshun collapsed building. PSC promotes 12 um, commissioners, 5,706 police personnel. Israeli Hamas, US, UK, India evacuate citizens. Death hits 2,700. Complete AAK gas pipeline to 2024. Federal government orders contractors. And articles evidence from Chicago irrelevant in Butel Supreme Court. Yeah, so um, a tanker laden with diesel, they said, fell around the Otedola Bridge yesterday um, and trapped a white bus, uh, according to eyewitnesses. And even the bus driver, he says he was just, you know, in traffic and trying to join traffic. And before he knew it, this tanker had falling on him. So the good news is that no lives were lost. Mm. Um, the police say that it looks like a situation where there was brake failure or and speeding involved as well. But then uh, when it fell, it spilled its content and we had Nigerians carrying buckets and all sorts of things, trying mm -hmm. to scoop, you know, not trying, in fact, they scooping scooped, yeah. um, oil. And then when the authorities got there and tried to stop them, they thought it was, why are you stopping us? They said, um, we're just wasting. Look at how the oil is just wasting when we could when we could be taking it away. So Nigerians don't understand there is a the risk. implications. Yeah. <laughs> the implications of doing that. What if it had gone off? But mm. thankfully, no lives were lost. But um, yesterday as well, they said another um, petrol laden tanker exploded in the Sari Gomu area of the state. That was much later at night and. Um, you know, uh, as a, but the punch is saying at the time of the report, you know, um, they were still combating the fire. So we don't know what the casualties were because, you know, that area is quite um, busy, especially around that time of the night. And I just truly hope that there were no lives lost in that incident as well. But we have, we'll, I think we'll wait mm. for an update. Okay. And that's the in punch. Yes. So uh, Minister of State's Petroleum Resources, Ipiripi, Ipu. Uh, you know, talks to, to contractors handling the 614 kilometer Jaokuta Kaduna Kanu gas pipeline project not to default on the promised July August 2024 completion deadline that they had given. So, the sp spokesperson for the minister, Louis Iba, uh, in a statement yesterday said the deadline was issued while the minister was on tour of the project on Thursday. And, you know, the minister had expressed concern over the slow pace of work and was demanding the contractors handling the segment of the project, uh, asking them when it will be completed. And so they made that promise that by July, August, it will be ready. So um, they also said there are some challenges that is affecting or slowing down the AKK gas pipeline. And they mentioned insecurity in the neighboring Niger states. And also right of way, uh, according to them, said there are a lot of rocks and rivers and that portion of the road, that that's what's slowing them. So they are now working with 
um, company, NMPCL, and security agencies to ensure that they are able to, you know, give them an opportunity. If they can handle the security issues, then the workers can work 24 hours to make sure that they meet up with the deadline for July and August. All right, let's go on a quick break. When we come back, we continue with our review. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Thanks for staying with us. So a collapsed building in Oshun State um, claimed the lives of two people. It was a building, an uncompleted building being used as a church. Mm. Um, according to the report in The Punch, uh, the building owner, one woman amongst the victims, died while on the admission in hospital. Um, some minutes about 7 p.m., a few minutes to 7 p.m., that's when the, uh, the members in the community heard a noise and it was the building that came down. They got there and rushed them to the hospital. Um, the um, the Nigerian Security and Civil Defense Corps, um, the spokesperson, that's Kane, the Adelike, was confirming that it was a church, an inc incomplete building, which, which had been used for a church, and um, the building collapsed, and um, they've warned them not to be using these, because according to them, there were workers working in that building at the time of collapse, so it was obviously not strong enough to be in use. The four people were trapped under the rubble. They were later evacuated and taken to the nearby hospital. Three women and a man were evacuated, of which two eventually died. Oh. Really sad. Police Service Commission has announced um, the promotion of about 5,718 officers, and uh, they specifically promoted 12 commissioners of police to the next rank of the AIG. I'm hoping it benefits us. The assistant commissioner of police were also promoted to the deputy to the position of deputy commissioners across board. They were, I don't want to complete all the figures, but they did the on top of the. the veterinary doctors within the police service as well who were also promoted. I'm just happy. I'm very, it's important, you know, this promotion has happened. It's very important too. Mm. There must be career growth. Yes, people must, must be, see it. You know, yes, and they must be careful for their welfare. So the promotions usually comes with, uh, you know, some benefits. benefits. And housing is extremely important to that police. Housing. Uh, I just housing. Hope, I just wish they could you do know? it just generally. Yes, I'm hoping that they will do a private awful. partnership uh, thing where private contractors who come and take over police barracks, demolish and rebuild mm -hmm. to proper standards, modern standards. Vanguard, article cooked up allegations against me in the Butel Supreme Court. Um, LPPC elevates 58 lawyers to SAN's rank. CBN at the World Bank announces a trillion dollar GDP target. Era of exporting raw materials over, says Alake. A proper gridlock, Lagos government impounds 18 trucks for indiscriminate parking. No discrepancies in OB certificate, says Labour Party. Tinubu appoints Ulu Koyade, EFCC Chairman, Hamajoda Secretary. Reps invite Minister Diaspora Commission over alleged maltreatment of Nigerians in Ethiopia. Infrastructure revamp key to our economic policies, says Sheti Ma. Okay, which story are we starting with? I took a story. Go ahead. So Nigerian Navy ship uh, NNS Beecroft's Apapa Lagos intercepted a boat alleged to be smuggling in foreign rice from neighboring West African countries. It's not in the I took it inside. Sir. And I, I was told you. <laughs> I was looking for this. So they, okay, said they seized 44 bags of rice loaded in the boats and uh, there were no arrests because by the time they were able to, they were about to catch those people, those ones swam away. So they just left the boat and left the rice. And this happened at about 5 a.m., on Wednesday in Agbara. And um, according to the uh, report, they said the surveillance system through the Falcon Eye alignment employed by Nigerian Navy uh, to ensure peace and tranquility within the maritime environment was what detected the activities of these saboteurs. And they are saying now they have been bringing, they, because they stopped them from bringing uh, their huge consignments, they now smuggle it in gradually, little by little, so they don't carry a lot at the same time. But, you know, the idea is for us to be able to grow our own locally made rice. So they are going to be working, the Navy is going to be working hand in hand with customs, which they have handed over the 42 bags of rice to customs to ensure that they are not uh, allowing the saboteurs to just get away with what is happening. Okay, so yeah. the um, LPPC, there's a legal um, practitioner privileges committee has promoted 58 lawyers to the rank of the senior advocate. This was announced by the Chief Registrar of the Supreme Court, Mrs. Hajjo Sariki, who is also the Secretary of the LPPC. But <clears throat> only one professor from the academia was, you know, promoted to the position of SEN along with these um, um, lawyers. I always notice back in school, the lawyers practicing as lecturers 
hated the fact that they also have to be burdened by public, uh, you know, litigate, uh, court practices to be able to get a same position. Mm -hmm. And, you know, the person would have done his thesis, there should be a standard, you know, that works for that promotion for them as well. But congratulations to the new um, um, learners. Yes. Yeah. So this says um, <coughs> the House of Representatives has resolved to invite the Minister of Foreign Affairs and also the Chairman NITCOM, Nigeria Diaspora Commission, to brief them on preventive measures taken to protect Nigerians and air travelers to Addis Ababa. They say that, um, so they say this is um, the House Minority Leader, Kingsley Chinda, um, in, in a debate had noted that there's an alleged incidence of victimization, maltreatment, and forced imprisonment of Nigerians, including air travelers in Addis Ababa, mm -hmm. Ethiopia. They said that they had received an SOS um, call or message where a Nigerian you know, recounted his experience of being arrested and put in prison in Ethiopia. Um, they're saying that um, some Nigerians are also currently serving at the, I'm not sure if the pronunciation is not Chayota or Kayota Maximum, security and other prisons in Ethiopia. There are stories of them being, you know, arrested and then and taken to the hospital, forcibly injecting them with some substances mm -hmm. and then later taken to prison mm -hmm. facilities. So they would like for the minister and the chairman need come to come and sit with them, let them understand what's happening there, what do we have in place for the protection of Nigerians in Addis Ababa and just, you know, investigate this mm. whole thing that is happening here. <clears throat> so they've resolved to call them for this meeting. And when they do, we'd like to hear, you know, how this right. goes. So the Minister of Solid Minerals and Development, Mr. Dele Alake, has stated the policy valuation. Uh, he has restated the policy of value addition, actually, by any company with the license, requisite license and permit to mine materials, saying that the era of just exporting our raw materials is over. Specifically, he said, I will emphasize value addition as a policy of government for the mine sector. And I will urge stakeholders and potential investors to embrace it to boost the economy to bring forth foreign exchange. So he was in Nasara State, where at the stone laying um, um, ceremony of factory processing of lithium, uh, lithium battery in Nasara State, which is a great thing. He was also applauding the, um, the governor for this um, huge initiative, saying that um, they acknowledge the significance of foundation stone laying ceremony process of 16,000 tons of lithium batteries. So that's the value addition is asking. Just, just take our raw materials and go. Oh, we can like actually that. create jobs and yeah. improve our economy by processing, it's adding it's value it's here in Nigeria, which is a great thing. So well, he's saying it's also encouraging other governors across different states who can also do the same thing, where we can see uh, where they can partner with federal government to ensure that they add value to the raw materials that God has given us. In our I also hope that they are discussing our environmental policies as they do this. Um, for this, um, you know, mining. Short story. Yeah. story in Vanguard. Yes. So, That's two stories in Vanguard. Yes, now I took one in front. Ginger farmers are not dying yeah. of shock. It's just painful. So Ginger Farmers Association ginger. of Nigeria, people that farm our ginger, ginger. that we mm. used to cook our stew, you know, said uh, many of their members collected loans for the farming season and they are dying of shock in mm. seven states. So the national president, Nuhu Bagari Audu, said this when he led the delegation to thank the Senate and Senator Sunday Marshall for sponsoring a motion on the ginger disease that's affecting farmers. So there's actually a disease that's eating up all of their ginger. And they said they've lost uh, 10 billion to ginger dis uh, disease in Kaduna State alone. 5 billion had been lost in Benue, uh, Niger, Plateau, Nasera, Kano, and Akwaibom. And it was shocking to hear that they have actually been exporting this ginger outside the country and it's going to be affecting the GDP. Mm. So uh, you know, they're asking for help to see how they can solve. This is the time we're going to be calling all the professors in agri uh, our universities that are no teaching agriculture to find solutions yeah. to this disease. Mm. We need to know the name of the disease and see what we can do to... <laughs> Okay, moving on to the Nigerian Tribune. Let's find a story we're not taking. Dismissed articles appeal for lucky merit says Tinumbu. Um, Navy destroys 3 million litre capacity illegal refinery camps in rivers. Tinumbu appoints Uluko Ede as new EFC chairman. FG approves over 260 emergency road repairs. Ajilo Fala knows why 56 others for SAN rank. And uh, how flood affected cassava, maize, beans in 18 states report. Yeah, okay, I have the Nigerian Navy ship NNS Pathfinder. They said on Wednesday they destroyed a 3 million litre capacity illegal refinery with six refiner, refining camps in Cawthorn Channel. They said that this um, channel is located, these illegal refinery camps are located within the Cawthorn Channel, two in Degema 
local government area of River State. He says th what these oil thieves do is that um, they, cru um, they steal crude oil from the wellhead operated by NMPCL, right? And then they have installed this six-inch pipeline running over two kilometers from the wellhead to three million to the three million capacity reservoir, which distributes crude to the six illegal refining camps. Um, the commander of the NNS, um, his name is Commodore Desmond Igbo, says that um, the illegal refinery and operators were not only sabotaging the nation's economy but destroying the environment as well because of the way that they were doing it. So. Um, they, due to the investigation, they were able to, you know, clamp down on that. And um, they said that they are going to continue in doing so, you know. But they are saying to ensure that this does not continue, they are speaking to the communities, you know, engaging the youth in the communities, all other stakeholders, talking to them about um, how to not encourage or be a part of, you know, this all theft that is going on. Because without their, without their involvement in this fight, it will not go anywhere. But uh, to tell you that, you know, they have several of these camps and we've been hearing them, you know, clamping down on them over a, you know, we have quite a few of them and I'm happy that, you know, we're able to close them down and okay. maybe okay. hopefully this will stop. So President Bola Ahmed Tunubu has responded to the appeal filed by um, Abu Bakar Atiku at the Supreme Court, you know, of course, against the PEPT tri tribunal outcome that, you know, happened um, early just, I mean, last month, when was it again? So, um, they were, of course, still questioning the victory that President Bola Ahmed Tunubu had at the February 2015 elections. He is saying that all the issues, especially that of the FCT filed by Article, are irrelevant. He says that, you know, of course, his entire response and his own um, appeal uh, defense filed is questioning everything that Article is appealing against. So, we're looking to see the outcome of the Supreme Court. <laughs> <clears throat> Sorry. Um, so we have the president had appointed the new EFC chairman, Mr. Ola Olukoyede, as chairman of the, um, the EFC, that's Economic Financial Crimes Commission. And um, he's taken over from the detained, um, current suspended um, chairman of that uh, bar. If you remember, he was Abdul Rashid Bar, was actually suspended from the, and um, he had to then eventually resign. Um, this person in particular has actually worked in the EFCC as chief of staff, I think it's 2013 to 2018. Um, he has 22 years of experience as a regulatory compliance a consultant, a specialist in fraud management and corporate intelligence. So he's somebody obviously fit for the job. Some have even said he's an RCCG pastor. We don't even know, but either way, it doesn't matter. If it doesn't really matter as long as he just does the job. And then there's a there's a um, there's somebody also was appointed as secretary. I think it was um, let me get the name right. He's Muhammad. Mr. Mr. Mohammed Hassan Hamajoda to serve as secretary to the EFCC, and this is also renewable after four years. That is all we can take on today's review. When we return, we move on to our hot topic of the day. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. Your view will be right back.